So you have read the title and you know that we're gonna explore 4 crazy effects that Luminar 2018 can do which Photoshop or Lightroom cannot. However, there's a twist. I, with my 11 years of experience with Photoshop, most of which was spent head swapping, will try to recreate these 4 awesome effects that we create in Luminar very easily just using Photoshop and Lightroom. This will be a challenge, a big one, so let's get to it. Before we begin, we need to understand that in Luminar, a workspace is made up of filters. Now what are filters in Luminar? You can think of filters as different machines that do different kinds of adjustments to your images. For example, there is a filter aka machine for sharpening. There is a machine to set the white point and the black point. There is a machine to do black and white conversion. A workspace is a collection of all these machines or in other words all these filters with no adjustments made. It is important to understand this. You need to make those adjustments. There are no preset adjustments made. Luminar already comes with a set of workspaces as you can see right here landscape workspace is now selected. So there are a lot of them like professional essentials for portrait, for street, black and white, right? And if you select any of them, for example, professional, all the professional machines or filters show up. And in all of the filters, no adjustments have been made. You need to open them up and make those adjustments, like in the develop or advanced contrast, so on and so forth. For example, if this was a landscape, I would choose the landscape workspace and See, all the landscape related machines show up. Now the question is, where do we get these filters or machines? You can just click on add filter and these are the machines that we can add. Like split toning, golden hour, dramatic and a lot of other great ones. So a workspace is just a collection of all these things here. And these are pre-made collections. Now, it is just like Lego. You can create your own workspace with your own machines which is required to edit the kind of images that you produce. So if you see that you only apply certain machines or filters to your images, you can create a workspace for that. So I can simply go ahead and click on the drop down and clear workspace. And for example, I only use the golden hour. I'm going to add that I only use the advanced contrast and I only use the accent AI filter. Only these three. So I have created, I have built a workspace of just these three and I can save that. Then you might be wondering, what are presets? Well, presets are set of filters or machines with adjustments made. So if we look here, have a look. These are the presets. So you can choose a category. For me, outdoor is selected and you can choose any one of these presets. For example, abandoned place. So have a look at these things. What are these? These are filters and a preset collection of filter, right? And in all of these adjustments have already been made. Now keep in mind, you can change those accordingly. And if you think the value is too much, you can directly decrease the filters amount. This decreases the overall effect of all of these. Or in other words, we can say that presets are preset collection of filters with preset values, creating a preset workspace that gives you a preset look, which is customizable. Hope that made sense. Time for us to jump into the effects. So the effect number one is advanced contrast. By the way, for the purpose of this video, we're going to be using Luminar as a plugin for Photoshop and Lightroom. Keep in mind that it's also available standalone. So here we have a very nice image and we're going to try to give it the old black and white look. So let's try to do this. Since we are in Lightroom, we would right click, edit in Luminar 2018. It will open the image in Luminar. Edit to copy? Yes, edit. We will be making it black and white and yes, it does come with professional workspace as a default, which I love, but you can choose the black and white workspace. The black and white workspace is a collection of all those filters which Luminar thinks you would use for a black and white conversion. But I like the professional workspace and I can customize it anytime, so it doesn't really matter. So 
To make it black and white, let's add first of all a black and white machine. So add filter and we're gonna add a black and white inside of essentials group. We have black and white conversion machine. So there we go. It already converts it into black and white. However, let's open that up. You have all those regular red, green, yellow cyan sliders and I don't have time to play with all those. So it again comes with all those presets that we can choose from and see which one looks great on this image. For me, I'm gonna choose probably this one looks great. And I can make adjustments if I like to. So let's increase the blues and let's see what magenta does. Cyan, it looks great overall. All right, now you have the regular ones like exposure or contrast. You need the contrast for black and white conversion. And of course we need the details in the car. So we would increase the shadows and let's decrease the highlights down just like that. And if you increase it all the way down, I would highly recommend that you increase the whites just like this and let's take down the blacks or let's increase it anyway a little bit. Now here is the grunge and the magic of the black and white conversion filter and that is clarity and details. You have clarity in Lightroom but details is a whole new magic. So let's increase clarity. For this case let's increase it all the way up just like that and details. This is the one that will bring grunge to your photo. Have a look at it. It already starts to look amazing. But the filter that we are here for, that is advanced contrast. Let's have a look at it. It's under the professional group, advanced contrast. And since this is a professional workspace, it already has advanced contrast. And you can add as many advanced contrast as you want, but we need just one. So let's open up advanced contrast. And it has three kinds of contrast. Highlights, midtones, and shadows. It's not just one slider or two slider. It's amazing. It's six. So you can increase the amount of the highlights, first of all, to 100. Okay. Now, have a look at the details it made. If I turn this off and then I turn this on, look at the details it will create on the wall. Amazing. So increase the amount all the way to 100 and then play with the balance. There we go. I'm satisfied with this. Have a look at the shine on the road. Midtones, increase all the way to 100 and then play with the balance. Wow, you can seriously create some interesting effects here. And then increase the shadows all the way to 100 and play with the balance. All right, now at any moment you can decrease the value of the amount. I'm gonna keep it at that. We want more details in the shadows. Why not add some shadows? So develop filter and then increase the shadows even more, just like that. And then probably let's take down the blacks. Interesting. Now there's one more filter for awesome details and that is one of my favorites. Let me show you. It's probably inside professional as well and that is microstructure. Let's have a look at it. Let's open this up. Let me zoom in and as I increase the amount, have a look at it. Have a look at the detail. Let me zoom out, fit to screen. Have a look at the details we create. Increase it all the way to 100 and then play with the softness to select which details we're going to accentuate. So for me, this value is great. And then you can decrease the amount because I think it's too much and play with it. Have a look. Amazing. So this is the before, just the microstructure filter, and this is the after. It's processing now. Have a look. So here's the complete before, here's the complete after, and this is not over. There is one filter that works on artificial intelligence and has only one slider, and that is called the Accent AI. Let me show that to you. And just increase this slider. It knows that the car is important here, so it adds some punch to the car to drag the attention of the viewer towards the car. So have a look. So here's the before, here is the after. I will increase it just a little bit. To get more attention towards the car, let's add vignette. So I think the professional one already comes with vignette. So here is the vignette, and I'm gonna decrease the amount to add that darkness. And I can even choose the center of it. So place center. I'm going to tend towards the car just like that and increase the feather. Wow, amazing. Now, 
At this point, I think it's too much highlight, so I can either go to the develop filter or go to the black and white one and decrease the highlights even more. It's already decreased. Let's go to the developed here and then simply decrease the highlights from here and have a look. Again, it's not over. It is not. I'm not kidding. It's not over. How about adding a preset on top of this, an old black and white preset? So this has layers as well, just like Photoshop. So you can duplicate this layer. I want to keep it saved. I want to duplicate it. And then with the duplicate, I will rasterize it. It will rasterize all the filters on it so that it doesn't look all that messy and I can add a set of presets and all those amazing stuff. So it's rasterizing now. It's rasterized now. Let me show you something. Here are the presets. You can choose a category. Street is selected and there's this amazing one called 60s black and white. So I'm just going to click it and have a look. The 60s black and white with all those grain and all that amazing stuff. Let me just show that to you. Isn't this so cool? Now, it's all adjustable. You can decrease the amount of the overall filter to your image or you can simply adjust it the way you like. At this point, I would decrease the highlights even more. Have a look at it and decrease the grain. I think it's too much. I'm going to decrease the grain a little bit like that. And let's have a look at the before and after. It's totally looking old. Amazing. I love it. Probably I'll open black and white and increase the whites just a bit. Okay. And this is the after and this is the before. <laughs> cool. And I might decrease the contrast a bit like that. That way we have more details in the car. And then once you're ready with this, just click on apply and it will make a copy of your image and get you back to Lightroom with all these effects applied. So there you go. Interesting, isn't it? Now let's try to apply just the advanced contrast in Lightroom or Photoshop. Both has the tone curve and we'll try to do that. Okay. It has nothing like the advanced contrast in Lightroom or Photoshop, but we'll try to mimic it. So let's open this picture back again and we're going to convert this to black and white. Okay. Now there are already black and white filters in Lightroom as well, but we'll just increase the shadows. The same thing we did over there and decrease the highlights. And for the details in Lightroom, we have something called clarity. We'll try to increase the clarity, but you know, we don't have much control. It's like a global thing with just one slider. We had different sliders. Let's try to increase the contrast and see whether that does anything for us. Let's increase the shadow even more. Set the white point at the black point. Decrease the height. Uh, highlight, sorry. Set the white point and the black point. You can also hold the option. That's a great feature. All right. There we go. We are ready. Now, let's try. Dehaze just for the sake of trying. Let's try it. And, but have a look at this. We have added the details, but we have made our face black. It just doesn't look right. It's, I think... Let's have a look at this one. It's not the case in this. It knows, but have a look at this. When we increase the clarity, it makes her face black. Have a look. Right? So, um, all right, let's have a look at the other things. Let's try to mimic that advanced contrast. So we'll go to the tone curve. So what is contrast? It is brightening the bright areas and darkening the dark areas. And it had three for the highlights, midtones, and shadows. So for the three areas, we'll try to do it with just the tone curve. Let's turn it on and let's do it for the highlights. Do it for the midtones and do it for the shadows. We are close. It's not bad. We can adjust it the way we like, the way we did over there. But you know what? It does look a little bad. We get the details there, which is cool. But you know what? It's, it's very difficult to accomplish. Yeah, it, it's somewhere close, but you know, there are some areas which, which look a little crazy. Maybe something like this. I don't know. Something like that. Whoops. Yeah, this is close, but not as great. There's grain as well. Effects. I think there is grain. Yes. We can add some grain. We can choose the size of the grain. 
and we can choose the roughness, which is good at this moment. Let's have a look at this. It is good, not as easy and preset styles as that. Now, it already has Lightroom comes with some amazing black and white presets, which came with the latest update. So you can click here and go to black and white and check out all these presets. These are cool, very great. Something I use from time to time. So we can use, let's say, this preset. And then we can choose the amount of that preset. So I guess for me, it would be the amount. And then let's close it and play with the black and white thing that we had over there as well. So increase the red, the oranges, and the yellows a bit, and then increase the blues to make it even more interesting. And you can also add vignettes here as well. So we're gonna go to effects and add some vignettes like that. And there is no way we can move it, but we can use a radial gradient and play with this, but there is no way you can move a vignette over here. You can choose a midpoint in the center, but you cannot move it to the car. You can choose the feather, it's the same old thing. And there you go. So the advanced contrast mimicking it is not very easy with the tone curve. You can do it definitely, but to have it in a slider in that way, highlights midtones shadow is much more convenient to use. So this is the Lightroom. Let's have a look at the Luminar one. It's completely old, highly detailed effect. Now here's the fun. Have a look. You can edit this further in Lightroom as well. So I would decrease the highlights even more and have a look. Bingo. So they can work together to create much better results. So I can increase the clarity even more just a bit. And wow. Let's move into the second effect. And the second effect that we're going to be looking at is image radiance. So let's get to it. So here we have a picture of Flagger College in St. Augustine. So this is the interior of Flagger College in St. Augustine. I went there a month ago. It's a beautiful place. So right click and let's edit in Luminar. Edit. Now I already have made adjustments and I've saved that as a preset. So you can save presets of your own very easily. So I'm just going to open up the presets and I think I have made it. I'll go to user presets and this is the one that I made. Okay, let's bring it down. Very, very amazing, isn't it? So the one that I created specially here is the image radiance. So let's go ahead and delete it and I'm going to create that again for you. Rest are just to enhance it like sharpening microstructure. We talked about this before. This image was totally flat. It had all the details. I created all the de details with microstructure and the dramatic filter, but it lacked something, you know, it lacked the radiance here. So I went to add filters and added something called image radiance, all those dimensions, okay? So there is image radiance and let's see what it does. I'm gonna close it, I'm gonna open that one and let's increase the amount. See, that soft dimension and you can control how soft it's gonna be, how smooth it's gonna be from here. Interesting, isn't it? So I'm gonna keep the value at that and increase the shadows. It increases amazing details in the shadows. You want some warmth? Let's increase the warmth. Let's take it to the right and see what it does. Add some amazing warmth. And if you think it's too saturated, you can decrease the saturation a bit. Also, let's try changing the orders. If I apply microstructure after this, so if I drag this after image radiance, it does make a difference it adds all those details back in. Okay, so let's have a look at the before and after. So this is the before and this is the after. And we can apply image radiance. We can try to do that in Photoshop. Let's just turn it off and see what it does. It just adds some dimension to it. And we will try to do that in Photoshop. So let's open up back and open that back up in Lightroom. And here also we can increase the clarity easily and increase the warmth by using the temperature slider right here. Maybe increase the shadows from here, decrease the highlights to have more details, increase the whites, take down the blacks. It's interesting. Now to create that radiance effect, we can go to Photoshop, right click, edit in Adobe Photoshop CC 2018. So I'm going to edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments, edit. So here we have the image and we can try this. Let's make a copy of this layer, Control or Command J. And let's go to Filter, Other, and then High Pass. I think this would do it. And let's increase the value to a high number. So this will just accentuate the details. 
I want to extend accentuate the big areas. So for us, I think 600 would be nice. And also what you can also do, let me give you a tip. You can convert this into a smart object. Go to filter, convert for smart filter so that you can change the value of high pass later. Just like in a slider, that would be more awesome. Now let's apply filter other high pass and apply a higher high pass of this number. It looks okay. Hit okay and simply change the blend mode to something like overlay. And I want you to have a look at this. Amazing. Here's the before, here's the after. Of course, it's too much. We can decrease the opacity. Now you can play with the high pass to see what works for you real time. So if you increase it, if you decrease it, it will just accentuate the details. But if you increase it high enough, so it makes look, it's just like image radiance. Hit OK. Whoops, I accidentally moved it. Let's move it back. There you go. Very, very interesting. Just let's decrease the opacity even more. I think it's too much. And done. Now this was an effect which we closely mimicked. However, we needed to know that we have to go to high pass to do that. And high pass doesn't tell anything about r dimension or adding some radiance to your photos, but image radiance is the name of that filter. So you can easily look at the filter and say, hey, that's what it does. Let's move to the third effect, which is one of my favorites, and that is by color toning. So here we are in Photoshop and Luminar can also be applied as a plugin from Photoshop and also as a standalone version, as we mentioned before. So simply go to filter, Skylum software, Luminar. Okay, so it comes with the professional workspace. Let's just clear it up and just add one. And that is add filters and here on the creative group, I think there is the by, no, there isn't. It's here in the utility by color toning. And let's just close this and open that up. And we can choose a preset, like let's choose a warm preset, or let's choose this preset, this is cool as well. Let's choose the brown one and increase the amount. Look how awesome this is. I know it looks bad because the direction is wrong. So set orientation, click on that and we can rotate it if we want to. So let's just move it here and we can rotate it from this side. Let's rotate it according to the light. So the light is coming from the right hand side. So we're going to rotate it just like that and we can expand it just as we do. And we can move it just like that. Let's expand it even more. And there we go. It looks very interesting. Now, you can decrease the amount if you think it's too much. I think it's great, but you know what? It's increasing the saturation too much. So we can simply add the saturation machine as easy as that. So add filter. I think in essential, we have saturation vibrance and let's open that up and we can simply decrease the saturation. There we go. It's much more natural. You can also try play with the vibrance, but saturation would work in this case, I guess. There we go. Now let's have a look at the before and after, but you cannot click here. Why is that so? Because we need, it's still active, the set orientation, we need to click on it. Okay, now you can see, here's the before, and here is the after. At this point, I guess, I need to make that yellow color a little more orangish, so it's in bottom. So I'm gonna click here, I can choose the color wheel and make it a little more orangish like that. Interesting. So, before, after. Amazing. Let's apply it. And it will take you back to Photoshop with that effect applied. Now, you know what we should have done? We should have made a copy of this layer, which we didn't. So we can go back and press create a copy of this and repeat that filter. Go to filter, Luminar 2018, and that effect will be repeated. It will start. The same effect will be applied and it will automatically be processed and it will get you back to Photoshop. So this is the one that we created with Luminar. I'm gonna turn off this layer and I will try to do it with adjustment layers. So let's apply a gradient adjustment layer and the top color was what? It was brown, but we can make it yellow. We can exchange colors, doesn't really matter. So we can choose this color at the top and at the bottom there was brown. So we can go and choose this brown color. And here we can choose the opacity to 100. There we go, something like that. 
hit OK. Now we can change the angle to something like this. This was the angle. You can decrease the scale accordingly. OK, hit OK and simply change the blend mode to soft light. It creates a very similar effect. Now you can go here and you can move it as well just like you did with that and play with the angle here as well. Hit OK and you can also do this. Decrease the saturation, open up hue saturation and simply decrease it just like that. Now, here's the one that we have created by in Photoshop and here's the one that we have created in Luminar. I don't know for some reason I love the one that I create in Luminar and I have tried it a lot but was not able to achieve something like this because this area is very dark. So if I try to change the blend mode to overlay and try to make this dark, it becomes very saturated and the color goes bad and then I try to decrease the saturation, it doesn't look as natural because if I just play with this, it's very natural and the light looks really nice. Even if I try to play with the hue and see, it just doesn't fit in right. I don't know why, but we can get close. We really got close if we go back. All right, have a look. It's very close to this but it's just a little better and easier to do because it already comes with a lot of presets which would look good in this case and all of them are customizable. Like we did with the yellow, we made it a little more orangish. So it gives a great starting point and also at the same time, it's just easy sliders. Let me show you the fourth and the final effect and this effect works great for landscapes and also portraits taken outdoors. So I have this photo of this beautiful landscape. This was fort somewhere in St. Augustine. Again, I'm not sure, but let's just try it on this one. So make sure you have the layer selected and this time make a copy of it. Control or Command J. Now before applying Luminar, why not try to convert it into a smart filter? Let's see whether Luminar is non-destructive or not. So we can go to filter and then convert for smart filters. Hit OK and then apply Luminar. Now go to filter, Skylum software, Luminar. It seems to work with smart object, which is great, amazing. Now it opens up the entire thing because the whole image is cropped a little bit in Photoshop. So don't worry about it as of now. Okay. So I'm going to clear my workspace. I'm gonna, just going to clear it just so that you can see it clearly. What am I adding here? So I'm going to add something called golden hour. It's in the creative. Now let's increase the value. Let's see what it does. Have a look at it. It tries to mimic that golden hour, which is in the morning and before sunset. Have a look at the colors. This is amazing. Now, sometimes what happens is when you increase the amount and you add that beautiful golden cast to it, it also sometimes increases the color or the saturation a little bit. So we can decrease it from here. No big deal. And we can increase the amount even more. Now, let's close it and let me show you the before and after. So this is the after. This is the before. You see that golden tint to it? It looks totally amazing. Now, you can simply click on apply and it's going to process and get you back to Photoshop. Now, we will try to do the same in Photoshop and see how successful we are. And we'll try Camera Raw to do that. This is interesting. And you can also do some other things like maybe add a curse and you could have done this in Luminar as well. By the way, let's use this opportunity to check whether Luminar works non-destructively or not. Remember, this is a smart object. I'm going to double click on Luminar and see whether those settings show up again. Let's have a look. See, it shows up again and it shows up again with the values we dialed, which is amazing. Now on top of it, you can add dramatic, develop, whatever you like. I'm going to add a develop and then decrease the highlights like that, which is great. And maybe decrease the saturation a bit. So there's one more saturation vibrance. So we will try to decrease the saturation from here a little bit and take up the whites from here. Interesting. Now, let's go ahead and try the Accent AI filter as well. It's just one slider, right? So let's see what the AI does. Sometimes it does good, sometimes it does bad. In this case, it does really good. Have a look at it. So let me close that for you. Here is the before. Have a look. And here is the after, adding the AI. 
interesting. Now, still, I think it's too saturated. So I'm going to go back to saturation vibrance and probably try to decrease it. And you know what? When you make it more dramatic, it loses saturation. So why not? Let's go to add filters and choose dramatic. Let's open that up and increase the amount a bit. It automatically desaturates it. And you can add some contrast here. You can add some local contrast is the key. Let's try to add some local contrast. Really brings out the clouds. And then increase the amount even more. So let's have a look at the before and after. So I'm going to close it here. And here is the before. And here is the after. I think it's too much. So you can decrease the filter amount. Or I think the drama is too much. So we can decrease it here. Or maybe the accent is a little too much. We can decrease it there. Sometimes we go a little overboard. Golden hour is okay. Maybe the saturation was too high. So we can decrease it just like that and decrease the amount a bit. Interesting. Now you can simply click on apply. You know what? I'm going to keep the amount high. My mind changes from time to time. So there we go. It's updated. See? It's non-destructible, updated, nice. So we will try to create this effect in Photoshop by using Camera Raw. Let's make one more copy of this one. And you can choose to convert it into a smart object, but it's going to take a while. So I'm just going to directly go to Filter and then Camera Raw Filter. And let's try to do it here. Again, also it shows up the entire image. And we will try to increase the temperature a little bit. And then Clarity a little bit. Decrease the highlights and uh, maybe decrease the blacks, increase the whites, decrease the exposure, let's see, and probably increase the tint. It also applies a similar effect. Great, which is great. You can also increase the clarity even more to see what it does. Interesting. And you can hit simply try dehaze to bring more details in the clouds and hit OK. And let's see what it does. This is that. And this is, wow. The accent AI really killed it. Have a look at it. It made it, yell. Yeah, it did add a golden color cast, but have a look at the clarity. When we add the details, it adds those halos, which doesn't really look right. But the clarity here or the details here is very accurate. I have to admit that. It's, remember the picture with the, the car in it? The clarity in Lightroom? made her face black it's doing the same thing right here so this is the one with the luminar and this is the one with camera raw it adds a flat yellow it adds the intelligent glow which i love so can we do the luminar thing that we just did in photoshop of course yes but here's the thing it's not gonna be as easy to do it can be easy if you know the steps but again remember the example that we did with image radiance the example of the interiors of Flagger College in this video. We had to add high pass with a blend mode called overlay to add the effect of image radiance. Now we know by the simple language of English that we are adding radiance to that image. And the name of the filter is image radiance, which is something which we can easily tell that we are adding radiance. But Think about high pass and think about overlay. Does those words in simple plain English has anything to do with radiance? I doubt. We can definitely say that everything that we can do in Luminar can be done just by using Photoshop and Lightroom. But the catch is it might require you to have a skill set. It requires you to have the knowledge and the concept clear about Photoshop. And that's why we have this channel Piximperfect and I'm always here to help you. It's just that in some things, Luminar makes it easy, simple and quick. However, with Luminar, keep in mind that you hit a wall. You cannot do compositing with it as nice as you do with Photoshop. Not great selections and all those other features that Photoshop has, Luminar doesn't. Lightroom also has amazing features, which Luminar doesn't have. So is Luminar worth it? Well, if you combine, and this is important, if we can combine the power of Luminar, Lightroom and Photoshop and use that as a combination, it's a great plugin. So 
I won't suggest using the standalone version. I don't use it either. But for even for compositing, when you add the final touches, you can do that in Luminar. If you have ever played racing games, it's just like a nitro boost to your car, which is Photoshop and Lighter. If you want to try Luminar and see whether that is for you, you can check the link in the description and try it for free. So that's all for this video. Thank you so very much for watching. I highly appreciate your time. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.